well, where we are right now is at uh, Fort Warden. It's an old World War I um, artillery fort used to protect Puget Sound from the bad guys. And this building that we have right here in front of us is the uh, old power plant. Provided electricity for the fort in 1904, believe it or not. Probably the first electricity, I would say, in Washington State, perhaps. Definitely pretty early. So we have a nice, uh, <clears throat> the only non-wooden building here in Fort Warden happens to be the woodworking school. Uh, but we are doing plenty of woodworking on the inside of the school, nonetheless. Well, this is the, uh, the bench room, kind of obviously. It's filled with uh, 10 benches and some accessory tables. And all of Joburg. And we decided right from the very beginning, of course, to get really good benches and to isolate them in one room so that they were not sharing the room with the machinery. So uh, that's for matters of dust, noise, segregation, and also to make a very pleasant working environment here in the bench room. One of the things we, we do in this school that kind of sets us apart uh, is that we actually provide all the tools, including all the hand tools for students to use when they come here. And our thinking was that, uh, and they're premium, premium grade, these are mostly Lee Valley tools, a uh, smattering of um, old Stanleys, old records that we kind of have restored. This is just sort of the uh, repair area, actually, where I take the planes that need sharpening or a little restoration. That's what's happening in this corner. This, uh, this room, uh, which we did not lower the ceiling in, it's a bit noisy in here, but the theory was, this is of course the machine room, and the theory of course is that it's noisy in here anyway, so when you come in this room you put on earplugs, you put on dust masks, eye protection, and uh, kind of look like a robot when you come in this room to be safe. And we have a pretty complete set of your typical machine tools for woodworking. Um, it's not industrial grade stuff. We have that actually in another building where we do historic preservation work. And those are giant machines, big bulldozer type stuff. But, but this is more what you be in keeping with a home shop environment, which is what most people need to learn on. They come to the school for our basic woodworking courses. Uh, the historic preservation, that's a whole other story, which we will tell, tell later on. So. So one of the things that really, I think, sets us apart from most woodworking schools in the country is that we do offer an escape hatch. So if things get too bad, you can always uh, hit the red button here, and out you go. <laughs> Has it, have you ever had to kick a student out through the escape hatch? Uh, no, but some have uh, voluntarily uh, gone there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we, we have yet to uh, actually have complete need for it, but you know, this really was, uh, it was a very functional part of this original building. We are in the control room for this building, and in that next room were the huge turbines, and the room past that were these three coal-fired boilers. And you can imagine what starts going on in that room if uh, things get out of hand. You get three turbines out there deciding to spin off like tops. and. People uh, would race into this room. They couldn't get out the big steel doors in that room, and this literally was the escape hatch. Uh, also, uh, I've been told that uh, there's big on-off switches were in here, and it, this is DC current, and apparently when you throw off a huge knife switch with DC current in it, you can often get ball lightning. And ball lightning just sort of bounces around, and kind of melting anything it hits, including humans. So that's another good reason to uh, get out of this building, but we don't run anything on DC, so we don't have any problems that way at this point. Still another good reason to use hand tools. It's another good There's no ball lightning. No with, ball lightning. Yeah. No. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim Lawson. I'm the executive director of the Port Townsend School of Woodworking. This is the school that uh, Jim Tolkien, John Markworth, and I founded in 2007. In 2012, we're still working on that program. Um, it's going to be in many ways a replay of what we've done in 2011. Um, we're going to be introducing some new courses. We're very aware that we've done a lot of um, good introductory hand tool woodworking classes and we've got to sort of begin to provide 
classes that will take our students to the next level. So we're going to be building further on Jim's um, new traditional woodworker and what we've been doing in that. And I think the other thing that we're going to be doing on, especially after George Walker was here last, last week, is figuring out how to explore design more because we see that as such a compelling part of any hand tool, woodworking hand tool, furniture making, is building those design skills so that people can build really great furniture. And I think what we're seeing with George is a way in which we can take a lot of the fear out of design. Um, the proportionate structure that George uh, looks at and that Jim articulates through using sectors and dividers is both um, liberating and incredibly easy to do. Um, I'm seeing Jim being able to lay out and design a side table with a group of students in less than 45 minutes and then watch them go on and make it and those things look just great. So that's something that we're really going to be pushing on is that uh, idea of design. And I think the other things that we'll be doing uh, in 2012 are a replay of some of the best of 2011. We are going to be doing small-scale um, Japanese timber framing with Dale Brotherton. And as the lucky recipient of the last project, I'm really looking forward to the next project. Um,